So I got a request on one of my videos. I wanted me to talk about the uh, minis that I had. And most of them, it was the town and village uh, set that I had built, a uh, tavern and town. So most of those came from this shelf right here in my collection. Uh, they're all Pathfinder Battles minis. And most of these probably came from Rise of the Rune Lord. I mean, Rise of the Rune Lords and uh, the uh, Rusty Dragon Inn. But they're all WizKids Pathfinder Battles lines. In fact, my entire collection is mostly uh, WizKids battle lines. I have about 2,000 minis in these uh, curio cabinets here and a few more in the drawers waiting to get sorted. And I will talk to you about how I collected them all just shortly. So here we have two Pathfinder Battles cases that have not made their way to the uh, trash yet. I have a real hard time throwing away boxes. But uh, what you see here are um, individual bricks. I mean, individual boosters. And eight boosters make up a brick. Four bricks make up a case for a total of 32 boosters and a case. All right. Okay, so these are the individual bricks. And you see there's two different sizes. Um, this one is Dungeons Deep, which was an older one that I was missing from my set, which I was able to pick up a couple months ago. I think they did a reprint, or maybe they found some in a warehouse somewhere, but they showed up again, and I was able to grab that. Darklands Rising is the last set that was released, and they had tried something different with that. But normally, for anything that you get that is newer than Ruins, Ruins of Last Wall, which was released in May 2019, it's gonna follow this model. In other words, what you get is you get one large mini and then three medium or small minis. It can be three small, three mediums, or any combination thereof, but you always get four minis in a box and they are completely random. The benefit of getting a case is that you, in theory, you're not guaranteed but you should get every miniature in the set. And they have commons, uncommons, and rares. So you'll probably get one of all the rares, maybe three of the uncommons, and then four to five up to six of the commons. And the good thing is, at least with the Pathfinder Battles lines, the common ones are, you know, your standard foot bad guys, your henchmen or whatnot, uh, your uncommon, a little bit like your mini bosses, and then your uh, rares are going to be your leaders or bosses. So you kind of get a quantity that represents what you probably would actually use in an encounter. Uh, path, path, these are all Pathfinder battles. D&D has their own line called Icons of the Realm, and I'm pretty sure it follows the same suit, although I don't personally collect those. But what happened was, when we got to Legendary Encounters, they tried something different. They decided that you would get one large or one huge mini. So you could get that or you could get this. Um, when that happened, they also raised the price. The MSRP from, Rune, from Runes of Last Wall and earlier was $511 for a case. When they went to Legendary Counters, it went to $575. They said the price increase was because the box got to be this size and that would create more shipping costs. It seemed to make sense at the time. Um, and what would happen is, I think there was you know maybe three or four minis that were huge. So basically every box had to get big, bigger for the few boxes that had the huge minis. You know, just kind of the way it worked. Then they went back to Runes of Last Wall, which looked like this box, so you're back to one large and three minis. And then after Runes of Last Wall came uh, City of Lost Omens, I'm sorry, which went back to this. And then we went to Darklands Rising. And the nice thing about Darklands Rising is, you know, you could come up with either this guy or this guy, 
and what they what they did for Dark Knight Rising is you would get either two larges and two mediums or medium and small. So you still get four or you got one huge and two, three mediums or smalls. So basically they would sacrifice one of the mediums or smalls uh, and give you two larges to account for huge. And that way every box either looked like this or looked like this. So it's kind of a great deal that you have more larges and more huges than we ever had in any previous box. But with that came a huge price increase. It went to $639 per case. And I think everybody accepted it at the time because you were getting a lot more, uh, well, a lot more plastic because you were either getting two larges or one huge in a box. But now the next set they're going back to, according to the releases, a normal set that should have, you know, back to the large and three smalls. Uh, there is two dragons in there, which are on huge bases. So maybe the boxes will be this big to account for the size of those dragons. But in Pathfinder, technically those dragons are large and not huge, but due to the you know, the size of the mini and the way they have the pose. They need to put on a huge base to keep it from tilting over. Um, and when they do that, they're going to stick with the new price. So it looks like going forward, the new price is $640 for a case. However, there's still places where you can buy the old lines that you can pick up these cases from anywhere from $350 to $500. Um, which I know it sounds like a lot, but I'll talk about how that stacks up compared to other lines in a second. One thing I just wanted to point out is, you know, just because these are both larges, you can see that they're different size minis, you know? So if you're really concerned about, you know, how, what size mini you want, I mean, maybe this isn't for you because it is blind, but if you get the case, you get everything. Again, like these are all considered huge minis. It really comes down to the rule set, you know, that in the bestiaries for Pathfinder and in the monster manuals for D&D, they call them what size they are. And that tells you how many uh, square inches they take up on the grid battle mats. So the question is, is $640 for a case of minis a good deal? Well, it's tough to say. There's not much to compare it to. Uh, there's not a lot of lines out there where you can buy pre-painted minis. Um, the way I do is I compare it to the unpainted mini line, which is, uh, I, as far as I can tell, reasonably priced for all the other miniature lines out there, Reaper Bones and whatnot. Um, so the question is, you know, how do they compare painted to unpainted? Well, the way I see it, you get a box that has two minis in it for five dollars that's 250 a large mini costs nine dollars so doing some fancy math you get that a large mini is 3.6 times more than a small and using that ratio that break down the cost of a box to be uh, the a box that retails for twenty dollars and one thing to keep in mind is that whiz kids when they do their pricing they don't do any kind of discount on MSRP for large cases. In other words, uh, the case is equal to the individual boxes times 32. So 20 times 32 gets you 640. Um, but what that comes down to when you take $20 and you break it down, this guy costs $10 and nine cents and each of these guys costs $3 and three cents. So 303 compared to 205. You're paying about 50 cents for something to be painted. This guy right here, you're painting about a dollar more for it to be painted. So is it worth 50 cents to have this pre-painted and a dollar to have this pre-painted? For me personally, yes, because I'm not a very good painter. I've had these probably for three years now and have not even painted them yet, which is my biggest problem. I just can't get to it. 
So the way I see it, yeah, I mean, you're paying about 17% more for it to be pre-painted, but you are buying them in a big bulk buy because you have to dish out to make sure you get the entire set, you know, a whole case worth of MSRP. That being said, these are just MSRP. I would never ever pay full MSRP for a Pathfinder's Battle Case. You should be able to find them anywhere between 20 and 25% off. And if it's an older case, you can probably find them on sale for up to 30, 35% off. Just because WizKids doesn't discount the MSRP, the individual stores do. If you're interested in getting a case, I would highly recommend going to your local game store and just say, I want to pre-order the next upcoming case and offer to prepay for it. If they are smart, they'll be happy to give you 20 to 25 percent off just because there's no risks to them. They'll get it from the distributor and give it right to you. So ask them first. If that doesn't work, depending on where you live, Paizo uh, offers 30 percent off if you do a subscription, which you can cancel at any time. So you can just sign up for the next case, get your 30 percent off and uh, then cancel subscription afterwards. The only thing with Paizo is that they charge you for shipping. So that shipping can run anywhere from 20 to 30 and up, depending on where you're located in reference to uh, where they're at in Seattle. Um, <clears throat> so in the end, after shipping, you might net you know a 25% savings if you're spending you know 20 to $30 on shipping, uh, which is still a very viable option. Um, some of these older ones can still be found. Uh, Miniature Market seems to have a, a lot in stock. Um, and there you can get them for probably about 20%, 25% off, even these older ones. They don't discount as much because remember, these are considered collectible items. So the older they get and the more rare they get, and the fewer boosters and, and bricks and uh, cases that they have left, they might drive the price up because people are looking for those rares. Um, me personally, I just... I'm a completist and I like to have the whole case and I just like having the um, variety. And the reason why I use Pathfinders is for one, I play Pathfinder and I'm assuming D&D is the same way, but for Pathfinder, these cases generally, a lot of them will follow a specific adventure path or ma manual or module uh, for uh, the game. So it's really great when you have a pre-written scenario that uses minis in a case that you can just buy. But ultimately, that's what, how I got my minis. I hope that answers the question of where I got my minis from in the comment to one of my tavern videos. Um, that particular video, I probably was using mostly from Rusty Dragon Inn, which is a great one for NPCs uh, and non-combat characters. Um, each case kind of has a theme, I think even on the D&D side. And if you need to, I'll put a link down below. There's a website that actually keeps photographs and uh, it's like a database of all these minis, and you can search uh, down there. Pause. One thing I wanted to point out before I uh, close off is that this is my one and only D&D mini I have. The reason why I have it is because in one of my scenarios, uh, Venture Paths, it required uh, this particular uh, species, race, whatever you want to call them, <clears throat> and there wasn't one in the Pathfinder lines and using a uh, search engine, I just searched for it and found it in the D and D line. And I was able to buy it individually, um, buying them individually after market, depending on their values can range anywhere from two to $20. I mean, it depends on if it's a rare or not, uh, but I think I spent probably three or four bucks for this guy. So that's another way to do it is to just buy what you need when you need it on the uh, secondary market, which is cool stuff, miniature market or any other place does it and as you can see it uh it blends nicely i mean ignore the bases that's just something they changed recently but there's no significant style difference between D D and pathfinders they're same scale same color schemes and whatnot um, and also these are minis from rise of the rune lords which is the oldest case that i have back all the way from 2012 i believe so eight years old and they still work good today. I will say that over the years, the uh, molds and painting has gotten much better, especially in the faces. But uh, 
on the tabletop. I mean, the oldest ones right next to the newest ones, they blend nicely. They don't look any uh, significant difference between them.